This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a haunting retro chill wave graphic. Chill wave is a music and art micro genre that emerged in the late 2000s. It loosely emulates 1980s electro pop while engaging with notions of memory and nostalgia. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button and please remember to click like if you like this video. I provided two images that you could download. One is this silhouette of a man and the other is a photo of clouds. Their links are in my video's description or project files. Press Ctrl or Command N to make a new document. For its width and height, type in 100 pixels each. Its resolution is 150 pixels per inch. If the color box isn't black, click it and pick black. Then click Create or Open. To fit it onto our screen, press Ctrl or Command 0. Unlock the background and double click the layer to open its layer style window. Click Stroke. If the color box isn't white, click it and pick white. Make the size 1, the position inside, the blend mode normal, and the opacity 100%. Go to Edit and define pattern. Name it Grid. To save it, click OK or press Enter or Return. We can close the pattern shape that we created. When you see this message, click No since we already saved it as a pattern. We'll create a new document to place our grid pattern into. Make its width 1920 pixels, its height 540 pixels, and its resolution 150 pixels per inch. The color mode is RGB and 8 bits per channel. If the color box isn't black, click it and pick black. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Pattern. Open the Pattern list and scroll to the bottom. The last pattern box is the pattern we just saved. Click it to fill the document with a grid pattern. The angle is 0 degrees and the scale is 100%. Make the background active and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Shift click the pattern fill to make it active as well and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together. We'll stretch out the top edge of the grid, but before we do, let's zoom out of our document to give us more room. Press Ctrl or Command and the minus key on your keyboard four times. Go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. Go to a top corner and pull it out approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. Zoom back in by pressing Ctrl or Command and the plus key four times, or press Ctrl or Command zero to fill your screen with it. I'd like it better without the top horizontal line, so I'll open back my Transform tool, go to the top middle anchor point, and press and hold the Shift key as I drag it up until the line is gone. Then I'll press Enter or Return. To save file size and to make it easier to work with, we'll crop off the grid that extends past both sides of the document. To do this, press Ctrl or Command A to select our document and go to Image and Crop. Then deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Hide the grid pattern layer and make the black background active. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Gradient. Open the Gradient list and click the black and white gradient thumbnail. The style is linear, the angle is 90 degrees, and the scale is 100%. Click the gradient bar and click the lower left Stop. Click the color box and when the color picker opens, type into the hexadecimal field E, 6, 2, F, 3, 4. For its location, type in 5%. Click below the bar to create a new stop. Click the color box and type in D, 6, 
1, 1, D, A. For its location, type in 15%. Make a new stop and click the color box. Type in 2, 8, 2, 4, 6, D. Its location is 30%. Click the lower right stop, the color box, and pick black. Type in 70% for its location. Shift click the background to make it active as well and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together. Make the grid pattern visible and active. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Hide the copy and make the bottom grid active. Change its blend mode to soft light and reduce its opacity to 50%. Notice we can't see the top half of the grid. To make it visible, make the top grid visible and active. Change its blend mode to lighten and reduce its opacity to 3%. We'll place the grid layers into a folder by shift clicking the bottom grid to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command G. Name it Grid. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open the Polygon tool. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Invert the colors by pressing X so white is the foreground color. Choose Pixels. Type in 3 for the number of sides. Click the gear icon and tick Unconstrained and make sure From Center isn't checked. Place your cursor at the bottom of the image and drag out the shape. Then release. To center it, press Ctrl or Command A to select the entire document and open your Move tool. Click the Align Vertical Centers icon. Then deselect it. Unlock the gradient background so we can make a copy of it. Drag the copy to the top. We want this top copy to appear just inside our triangular shape. To do this, we need to clip it to the shape by making it into a clipping mask. There are a few ways to do this. We could go to Layer and create Clipping Mask, or we could press Ctrl Alt G on Windows or Command Option G on a Mac, or we could place our cursor between the two layers and press and hold Alt or Option. When we see this icon, just click it. Go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Make a copy of the layer and clip it to the triangle shape. Open your Transform tool and go above or below the bounding box. When you see a curved double arrow, rotate it counterclockwise and drag the gradient across until it meets the top of the triangle. Continue to finesse it until you like its angle. Then press Enter or Return. Next, we'll reposition the gradient colors within the angled shape. To do this, Control or Command click the angled gradient to select its shape and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. Click the chain link icon to unlink the layer and the layer mask. This allows us to adjust the size and position of either of them independently of the other. Make the gradient active and drag it across until you like how the colors look within the pyramid. Make a copy of it and clip it to the triangle shape. Make the bottom layer mask active and invert it by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Make the layer next to it active and open your transform tool. Rotate and position the gradient in this side of the pyramid. Then press Enter or Return. Reduce its opacity to 70%. Make the top layer active and make a new layer above it. Clip it and make the top layer mask active. Press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it up onto the empty layer above it. Click it to make it active. We'll fill the rest of the right half of the layer mask with white 
by opening our rectangular marquee tool and dragging a rectangular selection over the right half of the image. We'll fill the selection with white. And since our background color is white, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Then deselect it. Make the empty layer active and change its blend mode to overlay. Notice that after you made the empty layer active, your foreground and background colors should have inverted to white and black respectively. If it didn't, press X to invert them. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. Make the size 500 pixels. Its hardness is 0% and its opacity and flow are 100%. Brush over the bottom of the pyramid. Make a new layer. Clip it and name it Door. Open your rectangular marquee tool and go to the bottom of the pyramid. Drag out a rectangle in the shape of a door. Fill it with white and deselect it. Double click the door layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the color box. Type in F F F 8 D 5. Click Outer Glow. The color is white, the blend mode is Linear Dodge, and the opacity is 40%. The spread is 10%, and the size is 30 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Open the silhouette of the man I provided. We'll place it onto our Chill Wave document by pressing V to open the Move tool and dragging it onto the tab of the Chill Wave document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Then clip it. Open your Transform tool to resize and reposition it, making sure the bottom of the feet are flush to the bottom of the document. Then press Enter or Return. Double click the Silhouette layer to open its layer style window. Click Inner Glow. The color is white. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 50%. The source is edge, the choke is 0%, and the size is 6 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.5 pixels. Let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the effects. Open the Clouds photo I provided. Drag it onto the tab of the Chill Wave document, drag it down, and release. To see the pyramid under it, reduce its opacity. Control or Command click the pyramid to select its shape. Go to this layer mask and press Control Alt Shift on Windows or Command Option Shift on a Mac to intersect this shape with the shape of the pyramid. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the clouds. Unlink the clouds and the layer mask and make the clouds active. Drag it below the door layer. Open your transform tool and reduce the cloud size so its top and bottom are aligned to the top and bottom of the pyramid. Increase its opacity back to 100% and change its blend mode to overlay. Drag the clouds to a position you like. We're going to make a copy of all the layers so it'll ultimately become the reflection of our image. But before we do, link back all the layers with their respective layer masks because we want them to move together when we make the reflection. Scroll to the bottom and make the bottom layer active. Scroll to the top and Shift-click the top layer to make all the layers active. Press Ctrl or Command G to place all of them into a folder. Go to Image and Canvas Size. Make the unit of measure percent. The gray square in the center of the anchor represents our existing image area. Since we want to add canvas area to the bottom of our image to make room for its reflection, click the top middle box of the grid. The arrows point to where the new canvas area will be added. In the Height field, type in 200, which doubles the height of our document. 
make a copy of the folder, and make the bottom folder active. Go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag down the copy to the bottom. Don't be concerned if there's a slight space between the two images. We'll be adding a black horizontal line a bit later, which will become the representation of the horizon. The line will also cover up the empty space. Next, we'll make the grid on the lower half to be on the top of the pyramid reflection, since the grid is part of the floor. To do this, open the bottom folder and scroll to the bottom. Make the grid folder active and drag it up. Place it below the door. Close the Group 1 folder. Make the top folder active and make a new layer above it. Name it Horizon Line. Open the Single Row Marquee tool and place it directly between the top and bottom halves. Click to make a horizontal line selection. Go to Edit and Stroke. Make the width 10 pixels and click the color box. Pick black. The location is center. Click OK and deselect it. Open back the bottom folder and drag the grid folder to the top of the group 1 folder. Click the layer below it, which is our silhouette of the man. Scroll down to the pyramid shape and shift click it to make all the layers active between it and the silhouette. Then group them into a folder. Reduce the folder's opacity to 80%. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.